Hi, and welcome to this episode of our tutorial series on the Advanced VR Framework version 3. In this episode, I want to cover the overlap component. As the name suggests, the overlap component can be used to detect and track overlap events. This information then can be used by a drag component to move a mesh component of that actor. Here's what that could look like. The overlap component on this actor is set to uh, communicate with the drag component on that actor, which is, is set to um, specify the movement behavior of this button. The drag component in itself uh, is set to communicate with the listen to trigger uh, component on the lamp actor, which then in turn triggers the lamp to, to go on and off. The advantage of the overlap component is that it can be triggered by any other element, such as, for example, this cube. So if I place this cube on here, it will trigger, if I remove it, the, uh, the, the lamp goes off as well. The button is also set to communicate with the listen to trigger component of this, uh, of this lamp. So let's take a look at how to set up the overlap component in the editor. So now inside the editor, we can see that we have a overlap example right here. So if I press play, you can see that we can drop this cube right here. So let's try to imitate that behavior. For that, we'll create a new actor. And we call that over overlap actor example. And in the example, I will just put a cube. And let me put that at minus 50. And I'll create another cube. This cube is then supposed to be acting as our button, for example. So make it bigger, something like that, give it another material, um, something that's easily to see, maybe with that one. Um, make it a bit smaller here. Okay, now we have our button here. Um, we want to define a movement for our button. So for that, we do need a drag component. So I'll quickly put a drag component in here. And um, we have another episode covering the drag component. Uh, so I'll just quickly set that one up. So uh, for that button to be moving down, I wanted to move in the linear that component. And I'll want the movement to be from, let's see, let's call that button. Um, I want the movement to be from ten to to zero, maybe there's no ten to minus ten. Let's say ten to minus ten. Okay. Um. So for that, I'll quickly put that ten here, minus ten here in the section. So this is ten is when it's up, it's going to be off. And minus 10, it's going to be when, when it's on. So the section is set here to on. And this is basically all that we have to do here. Um, our start position is going to be 10. And then we can inter uh, include an overlap component. And the overlap component is what will detect uh, when something overlaps with this uh with this cube here um we have a few uh, settings that we can set so we can obviously set it enabled we can set it to be only triggered by an mcom that means a motion component is uh, for example your hand or your controller that means um you you can prevent uh accidentally dropping something on the on the button and the button being triggered by by other sources but in this case we want the button to be triggered, for example, by a cube, so we keep it that way. And we have the overlap tag. 
So this is something that uh, is very coherent in many of our um, in many of our components because we cannot really take direct references. Um, we it need to tell the overlap component that it should listen to this button. That means uh, the button needs to have a tag, and I will include that tag right here. So that the overlap component knows on which uh, which mesh to to look for uh, the the actual overlap. So this name needs to be the same one as the one on the component tags on the mesh itself. Okay. Um, then the the overlap component also needs to know which drag component it communicates to. That's what the tag of the drag component is for. If there's only one drag component, uh, then we don't need to uh, assign one because it will just take the only one there is. Okay, perfect. And um, now if you put that button in the world, very importantly, um, the same way that we have to assign this button to the overlap component, we also have to assign this button to the drag component. Because the drag component will also look for a tag, this, this drag tag. So we include the drag tag to the button as well. So the drag component knows that it should move this button. And now if we hit play, we still will see that it will not trigger. It will uh, won't detect any overlap events. And uh, to accomplish that, we also need to set the collision type on the button itself. So um, the collision uh, needs to, uh, the, the world dynamic needs to be set to, to overlap. So it is, a, uh, the, so the button will be able to trigger overlap events. And now if we hit play, you see that our button actually reacts. The button currently is not set to reset at the moment, so this we can simply do by changing the behavior of the drag component. Again, the drag component will be covered in another episode, so I, this is just for reset, uh, for for letting the button reset to its former position. So now, if we hit play, we see that it will always snap back and this already behaves like a button that can be pressed by any component. One last thing, um, because we can do it, we can set the drag component to be interacting with, with any actor, our actors to trigger. I can simply set this door, for example. And now if I hit play, the, the button will open this door. Okay, this is everything I wanted to say about the overlap component for now. Um, technically, the overlap component can interact in many di uh, different ways. And uh, since it uses a drag component, it technically can also move in any ways that the drag component can move. Um, but the linear movement is definitely the most reliable and uh, the one that it should be used, uh, most used for. But for example, you could also trigger angular movement um, by interacting with, uh, by, by overlapping with elements. So uh, you, you could also make a physical le a lever if you wanted to. Okay, so um, this is all for the overlap component and I hope I see you in the next episode.